Yo what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms and in this video tutorial we are going to be taking a quick short introduction to sorting algorithms so this is going to be a theoretical video and we are going to be answering three main questions that is what is a sorting algorithm why do we need sorting algorithms and the different types of sorting algorithms before we start off if you have missed the previous videos in this DSA playlist we've talked about the linear search and binary search algorithms so i'll drop the link of the entire dsa playlist in the video description do check it out if you have missed those if you are new on this channel and with that being said let's get started so let's start off with the very first question that what is a sorting algorithm now a sorting algorithm is used to rearrange a given array or list data structure to a particular pattern so basically a sorting algorithm just rearranges the elements inside a list or array data structure into a particular pattern for example it can be sorted in ascending or descending order if we are talking about integer variables or integer elements or it can be any other order as well now the comparison operator is used to decide the new order of elements in respective data structure so comparison operator is less than equal to greater than equal to and so on and so forth wherein some kind of comparison is happening so that we can properly sort the elements inside the data structure so now that you understand what exactly is a sorting algorithm the next obvious question that you have in mind is why do we need this sorting algorithms right so this is the most obvious question that comes into our mind when we understand what exactly is a sorting algorithm now i've listed down three important reasons why we need sorting algorithms so the number one reason is efficient sorting is important for optimizing the efficiency of other algorithms such as search and merge algorithms now if you've seen the previous video tutorial in this playlist which was the binary search algorithm it was important that the array or the list data structure had to be in a particular order especially in ascending order in our use case right so binary search algorithm only works on sorted arrays so that was the main condition for binary search algorithm to work so that's why sorting is required for certain algorithms to work properly so this is number 1 number 2 is producing more human readable output So when you have a list of information in a particular order it is more human readable and it is more understandable we'll take an example in a minute to understand these points and the third one is it is easier and faster to locate items in a sorted list than an unsorted list so if you've seen the binary search algorithm in the previous video we saw that the binary search was much more faster than linear search when it is implemented on sorted arrays right So now let's take a real world example a very basic real world example to understand why do we need sorting algorithms and how it helps us okay now let's assume we have a list of students and they are corresponding marks and this list is not sorted it is having no particular order okay by the way the names are the names of our subscribers only i remember suraj aditya bhavika suresh sudhir manish zuhair jayesh sharmin you guys have been commenting on my videos so that's why i have given you a shout out over here so yeah let's say we have a list of 10 students and these are the corresponding marks out of 100 or whatever and now you can see that there is no particular order right so zuhair is basically the number 1 who is scoring the highest marks of 97 in this list however he is not positioned at the top so let's assume you want to find out top 5 students based on their marks okay so how do you go about finding the top 5 students well since this is a unsorted list unordered list you don't know where the topper is right so what you will do is for the first topper you will go from the first element to the second item to the third item and so on and so forth till you find the highest guy and then you'll check through all the elements starting from top to bottom that is you'll check all the 10 items or 10 names and their corresponding marks and then you'll come to a conclusion that zuhair is the topper right so you need 10 iterations to find the first topper right so these are 10 iterations similarly now you can just cancel out this name since you have found the first one similarly again you will have to go 9 times you have to check all the elements in the list all the names and their corresponding marks to find the second topper now second topper is sudhir over here so we need 9 iterations now to find sudhir that is to find second topper then to find the third topper you want eight iterations because now you will cancel out this name from the list so the third topper is me tanmay at 91 marks so you need eight iterations right to find the third topper let's assume that you want only 
three toppers, top three students. So you can see we needed ten plus nine plus eight, which is a total of twenty seven iterations. So if you were to create a program to find out the top three students and the list is not properly sorted, you require twenty seven iterations to find out the top three students. So just to find out three students, that is the top three students, you had to iterate or you had to create a loop which was iterating throughout the list for twenty seven times. So this is very inefficient, right? And you can see even visually, this list is not really clear. You can't really understand who's the topper if Let's assume if I did not have these values written, and I would tell you that just find out the top three students quickly. So you can't make out. You have to search through all the list, right? You have to see, okay, who's the highest one. You are not really understanding. It's not really readable. So now let's take these same names, same students, and same marks in a proper order, and let's see how you can optimize this and make it more efficient. Okay, so now we have the same list of students with the same names. but i have ordered them in descending order okay so this is in proper descending order which means we have the highest mark scorer at the first position so you can see 1 2 3 4 so i have ordered them properly and now if i tell you that i need the top 3 students if i say top 3 students since you already know that this is a sorted list you know that the toppers are placed in the top 3 locations only you can easily just go ahead and mark these and if you are creating a program you can simply pick out first second and third in three iterations in fact you don't even need iterations you just need to point out these locations let's say it was in a array if you've stored these names in a array data structure you just have to access the first three locations that is the zero index position the one index position and two index position right and you know that these three are going to be the toppers only because it is already sorted so in unsorted scenario you are requiring 27 iterations however in a sorted way or in a sorted scenario you only need the first three positions you don't even need any iterations you already have the top 3 students over here itself and even visually you can easily make out by the marks itself you can see that okay zuhair sudhir and tanmay are the first three toppers and zuhair is first sudhir is second and tanmay is third right so it is very much readable and it is much more efficient when it comes to finding out particular values inside this list so this is where the efficiency increases and this was just a very basic example let's let's assume or let's take a real world example wherein you have hundreds of thousands of students you know in a college you have 100 200 students in different different batches and in that case if you do not have sorted list of names then it becomes very difficult to find out who is the topper who is the one who is scoring the least marks and so on and so forth so this is where sorting algorithms are very important and this was just one use case there are many such real world examples where sorted elements in a sorted data structure are much more efficient and other algorithms also work on them in a much more efficient way so i hope i have answered why do we need sorting algorithms and what is a sorted algorithm so we have answered two basic questions what is sorting algorithm and why do we need them now let's move on to the last question that is types of sorting algorithm so when it comes to types of sorting algorithms we have different types of sorting algorithms like selection sort bubble sort insertion sort merge sort quick sort heap sort radix sort so on and so forth and there are many more names which i have not really listed down i've just written etc 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 because the list goes on and on and if you're wondering why do we have so many different sorting algorithms if they are essentially going to just sort the list right ultimately they are going to perform sorting only so why do we have so many different types so each of these sorting algorithms have a different mechanism in which they achieve this sorting so the working is different in different cases and some sorting algorithms work efficiently in only some unique cases so just like different data structures are used in different use cases different sorting algorithms are used in different use cases and their efficiency and time and space complexity also differs in different use cases now i know we've not discussed time and space complexity and, and those asymptotic notation concepts so far in this dsa playlist but we will definitely cover them in separate video tutorials once we cover some of the sorting algorithms because then you'll easily understand what this time and space complexity is and if you're watching this video in future those concepts might already be covered in this dsa playlist do check out this dsa playlist i will drop the link in the video description and yeah this was a very quick theory on sorting algorithms what is sorting algorithm why do we need sorting algorithm and the different types of sorting algorithms 
So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the concept of sorting algorithms in data structures and why do we need them. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how this video was. Do share it with your friends and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.